Hello, I'm Melanie Jackson, Melanie the midwife, and this report on the research is about membrane sweeping for induction of labor. And it's from a Cochrane review published this year, 2020. The Cochrane database of systematic reviews is considered to produce gold standard evidence of publications. Their process is very rigorous and what they do is specialize in systematic reviews, which means that the purpose of their publications is to pull together existing research on a particular topic and use this pooled research to make recommendations and conclusions. So this research we're looking at today is called Membrane Sweeping for Induction of Labor and it's open access. So I'll provide you with a link so that you can go and read it in full yourself if you're interested in more than what I have for you today. The reason I've chosen this topic is that I've been hearing a lot of feedback from women about how they're being offered membrane sweeps routinely, sometimes prior to 40 weeks gestation. And care providers are offering membrane sweeps who, to women who are 38 or 39 weeks pregnant. And I'm confused by that. So I started sniffing around for some research and here we are with something that I found. So let's get started. What is sweeping of the membranes? A membrane sweep or what you might be presented as a stretch and sweep, sometimes what practitioners will call it, involves the clinician inserting one or two fingers into a woman's vagina in order to access the cervix. And then they use a continuous circular sweeping motion to free the membranes from the lower segment of the uterus. When I went through my midwifery training 10 years ago, I remember a midwife explaining that the idea of a stretch and sweep was to stimulate the cervix as well as disturb the membrane so that prostaglandins are released to help encourage the cervix to change in preparation for labor. I was encouraged to not only sweep the membranes but also stretch open the cervix. So I'm guessing that the range of what practitioners actually do to the cervix in the process of performing a membrane sweep or a stretch and sweep would vary from one practitioner to the next. But I haven't looked at any research about that. It's just an assumption. So if you're planning to consent to a membrane sweep or stretch and sweep, and you're wondering what it will involve for you, it will be worth asking the person who's intending to do it how they perform a sweep and what their specific technique is. And then you'll know exactly what you're going to be getting and you can decide if that's what you want. But anyway, back to the research and the object of this systematic review was to assess the effects and safety of membrane sweeping for induction of labor in women at or near term. And they looked at any studies of women who are having stretches and sweeps or membrane sweep anytime from 36 weeks onwards. The authors included 44 studies, which created a total of data on 6,940 women and their infants. This might sound like a lot of women and a lot of data on which to make a conclusion, but the authors state that when they measured what they call evidence certainty, and there's a measuring tool that they can use, it was found that the evidence certainty was generally low. And this was mainly due to the study design. It was inconsistent and imprecise studies that exist on membrane sweeping. So although there are a lot of studies on membrane sweeping, the quality of them is considered to be low. And the main bulk of the data that they found included, which included 40 of the 44 studies and 6,548 of the 6,940 participants compared membrane sweeping to no treatment at all. So from this, the authors comment that low certainty evidence shows that membrane sweeping may help in the commencement of spontaneous labor without induction and therefore reduce the number of women undergoing induction of labor. But the quality of the evidence is low. The authors say that membrane sweeping may be effective in achieving spontaneous onset of labor, but the evidence for this was of low certainty. When compared to expectant management, so the management that they would normally do, it potentially reduces the incidence of formal induction of labor. But questions remain as to whether there is an optimal number of membrane sweeps and the timing and gestation of these in order to initiate labor. So they didn't find sufficient evidence to be able to answer those questions at this time. Okay, so what have we just learned? 
Firstly, there are a lot of studies on membrane sweeping, but they're of poor quality. And even when combined, they give us the information on outcomes for 6,940 women and babies. But the data can't really be relied on to make a fully informed decision because the quality of them was not great. Secondly, there are questions that still remain because there's not enough research about it. So when membrane sweeps should start and how many a woman would need to have in order to avoid induction, we don't really know that information. Finally, let's look at the bigger picture here. The most common reason a membrane sweep is offered to women is to prevent them gestating longer than the medically defined boundaries of normal pregnancy. So anything beyond 40 weeks pregnant is labeled as post dates, but actually 42 weeks is a normal gestation and some women gestate even longer than that. And there is some research that shows that women who are induced before 42 weeks experience better outcomes for themselves and their babies than women who give birth after 42 weeks. But I'm going to have a really good research, a really good look at that research in another video so that you can make your own decisions on how you feel about that. Besides all that, it seems that membrane sweeping is being used as the lesser of two evils, where women are being offered a sweep, which is an intervention, in order to avoid an induction, which is an intervention. So what's happening is that the medicalized approach to maternity care somewhere along the line decided that women shouldn't just stay too far past their estimated date of birth. And if they do, they will bring on labor with artificial induction methods in order to bring their baby out within that medically defined time frame. But if you want to avoid the induction that they put there because of the rules that they made up, you could submit to a membrane sweep. So this intervention will save you from that intervention. And we'll talk about that in some in following videos. We'll talk about the evidence for and against induction for women who are pregnant beyond 40 weeks. But for now, this research tells us that we are not really sure about the benefits of membrane sweeping, so it's up to families to decide what they think is best for themselves. Now, a little disclaimer. There are women who do really want a membrane sweep, and that's totally fine and completely their choice. Membrane sweeps are relatively low risk of compl for complications, and there is some low-level evidence that they can prevent women gestating longer than 40 weeks. I know for myself as a private midwife, women have specifically requested them and that's completely their choice. I've given them all the information that I can and then it's up to them to decide what they feel they really want and need and what is best for them and their baby. Secondly, some women and babies have specific complications and genuinely medically need to have their babies earlier. And what we can see from this research is that membrane sweeps or a series of sweeps from 36 weeks onwards may elicit spontaneous labor and allow women to avoid induction if that's what they need. There is so much to talk about on this topic and I'll be doing more about the place of induction soon. But for now, if you want more just like this, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Melanie the Midwife. And also you can head over to www.transformativebirthwork.com and see what else is on offer. I'm Melanie the Midwife, and if you found this helpful, pass it on.